excited to be able to um, world premiere this uh, project. Uh, the filmmaker, uh, director behind this, Alma Harrell, has uh, really made these, in the past, has made these really striking, kind of otherworldly documentaries. Um, and uh, this is her first uh, fiction uh, feature length film. Um, and uh, um, with it, she is, uh, she's kind of still playing within a true world context because this is uh, written by Shia LaBeouf. And it's based on, he also acts in the film, and it's based on his experiences in the past. And uh, um, through his kind of true, just like, open honesty about his life. Um, and then Alma's incredible kind of, the cinematic heights that she brings his story to. It makes a really kind of magical film. It's a real honor to be able to, for the first time, present one of her works at Sundance. Please welcome director Alma Ferrari. <laughs> Alma was amazing as well. And Lucas, I mean, 
me and Lucas hung out so much, and and I mean, I personally, I see a lot of similarities because I'm a consequence of being around him so much, and and just you know, creating character together was was yeah, really helped me. sent it to Alma, she, um, she was like, uh, some of this is too smart. <laughs> yeah, that was like the first drafts. That was like the only real dilemma. Other than that, she was pretty, pretty, pretty easy to get to. Yeah, you mean about, about Yeah, you talking about, talking about his character, yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, just, I, I wrote him really, like, some, some of the shit was too smart, like, like, like whippersnapper jokes that were just like too, yeah. yeah. Also, I feel like from my perspective, I uh, when I got the script at first, I thought that I, I kind of I had I think a lot more empathy and love for Otis than Shia did, hmm. <laughs> um, and I think I I tried you know um, having show I wanted to show a lot more love to Otis in the script. I was very very focused, I think, from the start um, on really um, inhibiting his father, kind of d- discovering, bringing his father to life, playing that character. He was a lot less, uh, you know, interested in Otis, I would say. For sure. He didn't even come to the shooting days when, uh, you know, when Rufus was filming, and he, he didn't, he wanted us to bring Otis to life. He didn't want to you know, dive into that in, in that kind of way, and he, he was, he really wanted to, like, enter it from, from that, from a character that he's playing, and, uh, so that was, like, I think one of the bigger challenges is just, like, finding Otis, and we kind of did that with Lucas and Noah, you know, um, so that was, that was a challenge for us. Good question, like that? Yeah, um, <laughs> How did you guys uh, find the scenes between uh, Noah's character and the FKA Twigs character? Because there was no uh, words, and I just wondered how you guys found those uh, beautiful moments between them. Have you seen Alma's other stuff? <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess that for me that's uh, probably one of the easier uh, ways to speak is actually with no words. <laughs> um, much, much easier for me. I was lucky to have Shia to be such a brilliant writer because uh, I, I speak much better in dance <laughs> and uh, mime and all of that. Uh, but uh, really it was, it was about sort of exploring this connection that this, you know, that Otis has living with a father who is a clown and is a mime. And both of them, you know, Twigs herself was just so brilliant in terms of uh, being, you know, that character that's both a whore and a mother, which we usually see them like kind of split into two in most of them. And uh, really being somebody that lives with, with so much pain and sadness, and they both kind of find each other as two children and have an opportunity to play, have an opportunity to be playful and, and build a world of their own that is uh, beyond words and beyond time. Uh, so that was kind of, I think, the idea. And also, they just had such good chemistry. I think the first day we kind of rehearsed the, the mind stuff. Do you want to talk about this? <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, I mean, we, we had like a whole uh, two hours or something with this amazing guy who was just like oh, yeah. getting us to do all this film. film. Yeah, it, it's just random stuff and just like mining it. and. And, and it was really great, and because also, what are they going to talk about, like the characters? Because like they're from, from two different total worlds, so it, it's also even more even better to kind of have fun and play rather than have like a deep conversation about life. 
Um, so, so yeah, that that was really great, and um, yeah, I just I I loved doing that scene. It was it was one of the best scenes to shoot, just like playing around and and trying to make her laugh was was really cool. I kept a healthy distance with some stuff, you know, but I got close to some other stuff. I just I um you know my the writing started in a very specific place. Like she said, it was very focused. So um, some of the shit with my dad is like really tricky stuff. Um, I talked to him about what he was comfortable with, which is wild. <laughs> <laughs> wild talks with my dad about what he was comfortable with and like trying to, trying to have him see it my way, you know? A lot of shame in the man still, you know? He wasn't like super excited about this shit, you know, at all. At all. So, you know, just trying to have a balance between everybody involved, you know, and uh, trying to tell the truth too, you know, trying to get to the truth, you know. But, but that doesn't always mean like mean, you know, truth. Some truth is really mean, you know, like unnecessary type stuff. And just some shit's private, my mom and stuff like that, you know. Some shit's like really, really, really private. I don't know, I found my way. All my help, you know. A lot of hers in the movie too, a lot of heat, you know, it's not just all me, but I know it feels that way. But it's not. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Good thing. So at the end about when we had a big argument and said, you hear what you're saying to me, you know how it makes me feel mm. from the father's perspective. Mm. Shit, I still have my dad saying that to me at 25. Yeah, true, uh, huh? Do you think that after going through what you've gone through, you're able to write this thinking from that perspective of, hey, look at the shit that you're saying to me kind of bringing that together and kind of where was your mind at when you maybe realized what your dad was going through? Man, I think you worded that shit perfect, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I want to say that um, I think one of the reasons I came into this film, and obviously I, I was bright and shy on anything, but I uh, really, this one meant a lot to me because uh, <laughs> um, my father is an alcoholic too and uh, when we met we definitely had a lot of talks about that and I just want to say to anybody in the room that grew up with that, that um, anybody who's a son of an alcoholic or a daughter of an alcoholic or all brothers and sisters of mine and uh, I feel we all grew up with things that um, you kind of need to learn how to live with and how to uh, how to forgive and how to keep loving because sometimes the people you really love the most and love you the most are the people that hurt you the most. So uh, it's part of life, you know. And shy is really made it possible for I think all of us and a lot of us on the set too that went through that to have a really good experience digesting all that. So thank you for watching it with us. I studied the script hard for two months. <laughs> I brought some people in, we went over stuff. I went deep. Okay. They didn't use none of that shit. <laughs> Straight comedy, you know what I mean? And, you know, like, she didn't mention all the, the people with crack heads as parents. So I wanna mention that. Y'all my brothers and sisters. You know what I mean? You know what I'm talking about? Uh -oh. But yeah, it was improv, man. I didn't. Uh, I, it's weird to see because I studied so so much, and I brought somebody open. We was going over scenes. I even smoked a cigarette, and then they didn't use. It. I was like, damn, ain't that some shit? I could have just did this shit, you know, play a video game and save myself some time. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's answer your question. Thank you for coming